Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Webs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can call constructors from the super class using this special keyword called super. In my previous video, I was talking about how you can call methods from the super class using that keyword. So let's get started with this. So there is a class A over here which has its own constructor. There is a class B over here which is a subclass of A and it has its own constructor as well. Now there is one behavior that you guys need to notice. The constructor from B will call the constructor from A. So before we get into why and how, let's take a look at further behavior in the same analogy. There is C over here which extends B. Now the constructor from C over here will call the constructor at B. That will call A and everything will start running in the ascending order. So let's take a small example, try to understand this behavior and see why and how. So at this point, I'm using NetBeans over here. Let me show you exactly what happens. There's class A, class B, and C. So let me make B as a subclass of A and C as a subclass of B. Now all we need to do is put up their default constructors inside. So let me say A over here. Let's put the default constructor. Same with B and with C. Now if you guys don't know how to generate that, just press control space and it will be done automatically. Let me just put a system.out.println inside which says inside A. Let me post similar messages in the other two constructors as well. So now let's experiment. I have class A, B, C, everything is great. So if I go to A and create an object by saying A obj equals to new A. So as you notice, as soon as I say new A, the constructor for A will be called. It will run the system.out.println statement and will say inside A's constructor. Let me make an object of B over here and show you what happens. Now things are gonna twist upside down. When I say BB is new B, you notice something weird happening. It says inside A's constructor. Okay, let me change something here. B and make this C over here. Now run this. So you see it says inside A's constructor and then it says inside B's constructor, which means even though you're creating an object of class B here, the first thing that ran was the constructor over here of the super class and then what ran was the statement here inside its own constructor. Let me make an object of C over here and show you how that behaves. I say C obj equals to new C. I just say shift F6 and now if you notice all the super class constructors are being called first and then ultimately the constructor C gets executed. How this works is that you say new C the first thing it does is call B over here and B the first thing it does is call the constructor at A over here and therefore this statement runs the first which says inside A's constructor then B runs its own constructor statement which is this statement here which says inside B's constructor ultimately when all the super classes are done executing C starts running here and says inside C's constructor so why is this happening Let's go back to the slides and take a look at why this behavior is taking place. So let's take a closer look at what's going on. There's class A over here. It has its own variables and a constructor. Now if you remember very well, the constructor knows how to give values to these variables because that's why it's called a constructor, right? Because it's a function that knows how you can provide values or initialize its own variables. Let's talk about class B that extends A. Now here's the problem. B has its own defined variables. It also has some variables that it inherits from A over here, right? Now, it has its own constructor. Now, remember one thing. This own constructor of B, it knows how to work or initialize the variables that belong to B itself. What it doesn't know is how to give values or initialize variables that come from A, which are as part of the inheritance strategy. So, who is the method or constructor who knows how to give values to these variables that come from A. It's this constructor and hence B calls the superclass constructor. This constructor gives values to these variables derived from A as part of inheritance. And this is the same cycle that happens between when, even when there are several classes one below each other as part of a multi-level inheritance. So remember these points, a derived class has its own constructors. It doesn't en inherit any constructors from the base class. Now remember that one very well. People usually think that constructors are inherited, but no. Every constructor only knows how to work with its own variables and doesn't know how to work with the derived stuff. So it calls the other constructor from the super class who knows how to work with derived stuff. So in the definition of the constructor, 
the, the first action that you're supposed to do from your constructor is to call the base class constructor now remember this works for everything I mean every other class does this this part in B except the object super class because object is the cosmic super class in Java and it has no person above it now when you omit the constructor in the derived class then remember the default constructor of the base class is called as the first thing now we will be taking a look at these things in a little more detail in the upcoming video when we talk about the super keyword the different type of constructors the kind of errors and stuff like that but in the meantime I hope you guys have really understood the basic mechanism of why this kind of stuff happens if you do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below in the next video we are going to further dig down deeper into this. Have a nice day.